This episode is sponsored by Decorative Cosmetics. So, uh, you and I need to have a very serious and sophisticated discussion regarding current events. Because, though we've been working pretty hard, granted, I, I've been kind of, I've been in trouble lately, but, um, so I'm sorry to have been absent, but we have for a while now been working pretty hard at coordinating operatives, collecting assets, and particularly training spotters. Yet, it would appear to be the case that many, if not majority, perhaps all, of our people are largely too entirely unaware of what just happened. Okay, so a few days back, and I do apologize that we're really running the line on this one. We are very late, and I really hope we make it in time, but nonetheless, I will have already failed quite a few people in ways they may never be aware of, but we got hijacked, and I mean, it, it is what it is, and we're going to deal with it as best we can. Hopefully, we can even get around to letting you guys know what happened and why, but what happened here. We're talking about what happened there. The grand, the grander scale right now. But <clears throat> a few days back, the Republican Party, particularly the Trump administration, went about installing a young lady into the Supreme Court uh, to replace Madam Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who, as it happens, turned out to be like a single person acting as the shield for a torrent of corruptions that, <laughs> I mean, it, it's not surprising that many people don't see it. I'm going to try and tell you why, though. But it's important to note that we had one person really protecting all of us in, in just unreasonable ways <clears throat> to an unreasonable extent I think I should say but she uh, passed away sadly good journey madam <laughs> which that's it would appear to be incidental right that that should happen right now coincidence I'm sure but <clears throat> To replace Madam Ruth Gate Bader Ginsburg, this this young lady was brought in, and she was really just fast tracked, like tossed in there as quickly as is possible. Despite the Republicans having set the precedent for that to never happen, uh, just a few years back, uh, that was their rule that they put in place, and they said, "This is it. This is written stone." So their determinations can certainly be trusted and they are not at all fraudulent or corrupted <clears throat> these people in any case she was just you know thrown in there like basically no questions asked I mean there were some questions asked there was a hearing which this hearing effectively serves as kind of like a, a, a job interview for a, a lifetime appointment to a seat in a council of peoples who go about establishing effectively the, the broadest and most encompassing legal determinations in the country and by extension the entirety of the planet. Now, this, this young lady, she was just, she, I mean, she was asked 
questions regarding the First Amendment, and she, she couldn't answer because she apparently doesn't know what's in the, what's written in the First Amendment, yet here she is appointed to, uh, what's the word, to, uh, to interpret <laughs> the Constitution that she likely may never have actually even read. And also, mind you, to interpret it by her own kind of uh, unique standards, which they call, I think they call originalism, which doesn't quite fit, um, doesn't quite play with what the Constitution is and how it's intended to operate at all. But we'll get into that later. We don't have time now. I'm sorry. <coughs> Anyways, um, this awkward, unassuming, and, and totally fucking inadequate, and not in any way applicable young lady <coughs> is inserted by this the current presidential administration as a kind of expeditionary installation or or what's the word um, kind of like an incendiary extension of the current presidential administration's infiltration slash invasion of the U.S. political territories and their intended subsequent uh, infestation of the human community, their infection of the human community, spreading uh, their corruption and their backward considerations and their intentions to deliberately sabotage humanity and the planet in its totality, not at all unlike, say, an infectious virus might. Coincidences all over the place. They have implications attached to them, though they're probably incidental too. <coughs> Anyways, People's operatives in the initiative and, and assets yet to be acquired by the initiative, but still actors in the schematic, uh, as unaware as they may be, they, they worked in whatever way they could to try and sway this, to try and prevent it, but, you know, being that we had granted just total authority to a reality TV show host who turned out to be a covert saboteur, um, slash assassin coming after the planet Earth itself, uh, we, we gave him just total authority over us for reasons that we've long since forgotten, uh, most of us at least, <clears throat> some of us remember. We remember why we forgot too, but, <coughs> um, yeah, we, we gave this jack off total authority and we allowed for him to install this woman and the, the thing is that we could have stopped it had the entirety of the initiative been effectively, um, you know, activated on this, but they weren't because they weren't paying attention. They didn't care. And I really need to try and explain why because this is very important going forward. Um, we, we are coming up against some pretty rough endeavors, um, especially should this go the way that we would really not like for it to. But either way, whichever way it goes, we're coming up on a fork in the road and <clears throat> there's kind of like a line drawn there that I've seen what can happen when that line is crossed. Should we have to cross that line again here? I just... I don't... I can't do that again. I'm really gonna need for you. Yeah. You. Hey. You. I'm going to need for you to stop 
with that, turn that off, blot that out, you know, shut it all down, everything that you were intending to do while this plays in the background, I'm going to need for you to actually kind of focus here, invest the time, pay attention, spend time investing in this, I need you here, this is important. You, you have like, say, federal agents, uh, people that we've positioned as uh, authority figures in a, in a position of authority afforded to them to investigate, um, you know, political figures, persons that are placed in positions of authority. Um, and that's essentially their job, investigate these persons and, you know, report to us, the people for whom they work, on these people, whether they are assets to be trusted and, and you know, people that are to be respected and can be trusted with the authority that they're granted by us. We give them that, that authority. We give them that ownership that responsibility that comes from us. Yes, it does. It's not seeing how or why yet. It will. The question is, why aren't they? Have you been asking that? Have you really been asking that? Why aren't they investigating, you know what, I have a better question. <clears throat> why do we need for them to be? Like, why are we learning things about these, these political figures and such? Why don't we know? Why are we not provided this intelligence at the outset when they apply for the position that we are affording them? It's like... <clears throat> Why are we not looking at it? We aren't looking at it. That's the point. We are not looking at it. Why? Why do we need for these people to be investigating? Why is there a problem with this to begin with? And why don't we fucking seem to care about it? You know, the people with the initiative, whether they know it or not, they are in very um, direly responsible positions, gravely responsible, in fact. We came here to change things in ways that are necessary. That's what we're here for. And I know it's rough, it gets very rough, but it's what you signed on for. You knew damn well what you were doing. You just, you've forgotten. And we're in a need for you to remember. The majority of the peoples in our immediate or, you know, our fundamental, original, our, our launch pad point communities, uh, the metaphysical communities particularly, the spiritualist communities, people of this sort, the psychonauts, our immediate brethren, you know, people who are, people who are working for the initiative but don't really like know that or accept the responsibility of it just yet they tend to kind of be th thrown off we don't want to deal with politics we don't like politics of course and that's our stand against it but it's kind of like that catch-22 scam ain't it because your stand against it and as, as representatives, our stand against it is to simply no longer be interested in being engaged or involved in a political agenda what essentially governs your life. And, and you live by these rules. It's just that it's become so corrupted and, and untrustworthy that, you know, you, you've been distracted and fooled by the government. That's what I'm, I'm essentially saying here. You've been distracted and fooled by the government, yeah, and you have every right to be angry. 
but it, it's not news really, right? Or is it? it? It might just be news to you that you've been distracted and fooled by the government because it's like you're not really seeing how or why. Because I'm not sure that you really understand in what ways you're being distracted and fooled. See, you're not engaging the arena of politics. You're, you're just, we're entirely disregarding it. Um, the entirety of the political arena, as it were, has effectively been masked. It's so corrupted, it's so untrustworthy that you don't even want to look at it, so you don't. Our people, the people that are here to make a difference, are entirely uninvolved with this, this system that is determining or establishing our very situation. You know, um, I mean, you're not, you're not seeing it because it has been masked by the adversary, by this A&E. Like, why would you not? care about this. It, either you're afraid of something, or you genuinely just don't care. And I find it difficult to believe that any one of you do not care about that what is governing your life. Like, you, you have this idea that you're free of it, you can just ignore it and leave it be, but you are not free of it. And you are not uninvolved you have the responsibility of being engaged and involved with this system and not making a decision is your decision. There's a whole hell of a lot of us out here. I know most of them. People involved with the initiative, there's nearly a million people now in this network. And I know for a fact that as a as I said, the majority of them very likely cannot even see what has just transpired right in front of them. Now, getting back to the original story, this uh, Coney Barrett lady, this young lady who's been appointed a lifetime role in the highest court of our land. Our land, mind you, what is the most influential land on the entire planet. It's influencing all of the other, everyone, the entire human community, the human psyche, our collective consciousness is influenced uh, primarily by this conglomerate country that brings all of these, these disconnected, seemingly disconnected tribes together as one, in a manner of speaking. <coughs> And we've allowed for this woman to be positioned by somebody who has, for the most part, gone about humiliating us at first, you know, just obnoxiously humiliating us, making us look terrible in the eyes of the rest of the world, and thereby lowering their morale greatly, being that we were kind of the leader in this thing, this, this collective journey. We were even accepted by many of them as being the kind of leading figure <clears throat> and then our leading figure m makes us look like a ridiculously backward idiocy of peoples and then goes further to um, even put into play values implying that America indeed has lost its fucking mind and is out to get itself and everyone else with it killed that's the, that's the implications that have been put into play now. Meanwhile, as we're distracted by the ridiculousness of that facade, this young lady is installed. And people think that it's just, this is something that Trump has installed in order to uh, ensure that he has somebody on the panel to kind of, you know, uh, determine the election, should it go the other way, the right way. <clears throat> Um, you know, that that's 
what we're thinking that he's been doing, most of us. We, we believe that he's appointed this young lady because he wants to, uh, you know, sway the election, should it come down to that. <clears throat> Which, again, very coincidental that that seat should have opened, right? That somebody should have died to open that seat, just naturally. But that, in fact, is not the case. You know, we think that uh, Trump was attacking the post office, you know, uh, pushing the attack on the post office, trying to dismantle the post office, uh, you know, post haste, in order to prevent people <clears throat> from voting, right? But is it? Because that seems to be another layer of masking to me being that I can see the long-term effects of him having attacked the post office in that way, post office being one of the primary facilities of the initiative, a, a conglomerate, <clears throat> an organization of values representing communication itself, representing unification, representing intelligence, and, and the sharing of information. That's what the post office represents freely and openly. Which is to say, it's not intended to be a business, it's intended to be a service. Yet we have this businessman, failed businessman, mind you, in any and every way, <clears throat> attacking this, this representative value set in the human psyche, presenting that implication to the, to the entirety of the collective, along with this young lady being installed who is not actually there to sway the election as it might seem. What she's there to do is overturn the Roe v. Wade uh, case, this, this uh, <clears throat> determination regarding the Roe v. Wade case, and a lot of people likely don't even know what that is, and those who do likely don't know what it means. Uh, they, they're going to think, most most of our people who are actually on this one, they're going to think that this is some, has something to do with abortion, that this is about the Christians and the religious fanatics in general wanting for uh, abortion to be outlawed because they're pro-life, though outlawing abortion would lead to catastrophic troubles in, in that regard where it comes to women who are still going to go ahead and get abortions just in exceptionally dangerous ways and long term <clears throat> we're going to have I mean people, our people want to believe that the earth is, is abundant and that it's unlimited and the resources should they be shared freely are unlimited and that we have no problem with overpopulation but at the rate that we've been growing, we have no idea how many hundreds of billions of people could be attempting to inhabit this planet within a hundred years or so. I mean, that is a problem going forward that we need to be addressing. So, pro or anti-abortion, that's not, that's not pro-life, is it? Really? <clears throat> But no, the, the religious fanatics, they've never really been pro-life, being that their intentions are to stir up an apocalypse, which they're attempting to do right. And as it stands, they're coming very fucking close to succeeding. And you, we, our people, are standing by and they're watching it happen, inconsiderate. They don't care. You don't care. We need for you to care. We have people positioned in the political arena right now who can make a fucking serious difference, who are going to deal some seriously heavy knockout blows if we give them the opportunity to. But we need to do that. We all need to do that now. So any of you out there who are saying, I don't want to be involved with, uh, with politics, so I don't, you know, I don't even care to vote. We need to snap out of it. We need you to wake up. This is yours. The government is your tool. We created it together as a tool to govern us. 
because we've realized that disciplining our people is an issue that we need to be addressing. We've allowed for it to grow pretty fucking wild now. Look at what's happening. This country is at civil war because of one man. One man who threatens to tear down everything that the initiative has fought for, which, mind you, back to the Roe v. Wade thing, that's not about abortion. That case, it has nothing to do with abortion. Abortion is like a side effect of it, uh, legalizing abortion. That's why it happened. But the, the actual <clears throat> hearing, the case itself, and, and the standards that it's set, the precedents that it's set, is regarding your rights to privacy and, and generally f free choice as a private citizen, which can be stolen from you if that case is overturned. So, anyways, uh, I guess, you know, I'm, I'm sorry that this is kind of, it's not as well done as I might like for it to have been, but we are increasingly growing a kind of a deficit of time here, being that we, we ran out a while back and we just, we keep losing more and more, and it's... We're in trouble, guys. I'm in trouble, you're in trouble. I mean, we have our personal issues, of course, but those are actually working to distract us from the larger issue that is going to be determining the fate of our entire civilization. You guys need to be paying attention. We all need to be working together here. These, these things, the ways that... You, Many of us, most of the ways that you've been thinking about things recently, it's it's because it's the reality of it has been shielded. It's been masked. The aspects attached to the values of things are causing for your intelligence, our intelligence is to fail. Upon sight of them, they become invisible to us. Politics, the entirety of politics has become invisible to us. Wherein the fact of the matter is that what primarily constitutes our premier territories, the, the religious slash cultist territories, and the, generally speaking, the spiritual and metaphysical communities of what you know, the, these, uh, this religious cultist influence has become an infestation, tearing down everything that matters to us or should matter to us, but no longer does matter to us because we've decided to opt out of caring because they told us to. Meanwhile, these these religious cultist fanatics and, and generally speaking, even the, the basic fun, fun foundation of spirituality itself, it's not separated from how there's no division. Politics and religion, they are the same thing. They've always been the same thing. To, where that line between them has been drawn has been masked from you they don't want you to see that because in fact it doesn't exist is this what you'd see if you really took a look at it which you're not taking a look at it because you're being distracted we need you guys to focus we need everybody on point man we're if, if you if you're behind which most of you are some ways behind, you know, to some extent or another, but, <clears throat> you know, if you're, if you're way behind, like, you don't even understand what I'm trying to tell you here, I will, will get it across, we will, for now I'm going to teach you to trust me on this, I haven't steered you wrong yet, it's been quite a while, we've been moving for quite a while, and we've moved quite a ways, we've done a lot of damage here, we really, we've really have made, you know, most of you, you guys, you're out there, you're, you know, performing one task or, or another from time to time, just running small errands or dealing with small issues, helping people here and there, you know, maybe working little campaigns, fundraisers and such, helping to build communities, whatever it seems. It seems like you're not really doing much, just kind of chipping away at that rock, right? But you're also not seeing the bigger picture. Altogether, the initiative has done a hell of a lot of good for this world, and it pulled us back from the brink on several occasions, but we're coming to the point where scales are going to tip one way or the other. And I guess I just 
want for you to kind of try and wake up to the realization that, in fact, we do have the leverage here. Our people, we are the vast majority on this planet right now. It's just that we've been tricked. We've all been fooled in, into thinking that we're all alone. You're not. Talk to me. The network is with you. Just talk to me. We'll get it done. Ideas, opinions, anything you got to say. You are connected to nearly a million people directly. I know the channel doesn't have a lot of subscribers, but we're on the Facebook thing. We started on the Facebook thing. We'll get there with the channel. It's <clears throat> I'm pretty excited about where this whole uh, interactive event is about to take us. Some pretty wacky things are are happening in the actual now. A little ways ahead of here. But as stated, we're gonna need to uh, we're really gonna need to buckle down here and make some serious and difficult decisions about where we are steering this thing. Because um, we're, we're at the helm. We're at the wheel here. And there's far too many of us that are still asleep. Gila Salai. Terve Unisiari.